Cartagena is, oh, Cartagena, Colombia is a, a lovely place. It was incredibly hot, ridiculously hot. We booked in for a few nights. We knew that there was quite a bit to see and do, that especially the old town, the old city. And the old city, oh, the first sort of uh, recordings of, of Cartagena go back to three or 4,000 BC uh, with pre-Columbian tribes. But certainly uh, from a Spanish point of view, the city, surprise, surprise, was named after Cartagena in Spain, was founded in 1533 and was one of the key cities with it within the Spanish Empire, you know, New Spain or New Granada, whatever you may call it. The reason for that is it holds a very strategic location between a couple of the rivers, the uh, Magdalena and Sino rivers, uh, and it allows easy access into the interior of what was then called New Granada. So it was a very, very key point, uh, very, very key port as well for that matter. So as you'd expect, nice old walled city, very thick walls. Good old British tried uh, sacking it a few times as well during the various wars and naval wars that we've had uh, with Spain. But walking along the walls was a good experience. Uh, very, very pleasant. Again, it was roasting hot. The first day I remember getting up and it was, I kid you not, at seven o'clock in the morning, it was about 41 degrees. It was absolutely roasting. I guess after all of this, uh, an interesting point uh, that I forgot to mention in previous episodes is that after after being in Peru and Arequipa, after heading down to uh, Lima or Huac even Huacachina, we, we were now down at regular altitude, as in sea level, pretty much. And the amount of energy you got from being at sea level was was brilliant. I kind of realised how, uh, you know, being at such high altitude, how much that can take out of you. Anyway, back to Colombia, back to Cartagena. It's got a very Caribbean feel uh, in terms of its climate. It's, you know, the, I think the average temperature is about 30 degrees most of the year round. We spent the first day uh, walking around the walls, uh, looking at the old castillos, uh, looking around some old churches. Now, Colombia was is famed for its drugs, as you can well imagine. One thing that the hostel people said to us, and they were very clear about this, they said, if you get offered drugs on the street, if you get offered drugs at all, you just have to be very stern, you say no, you move on. You can get into all sorts of trouble if you accept drugs on the street, because you might get off the little sample, these people then might march you off to um, a cash point, they might force you to get cash out, you know, from there it can lead to all sorts of dangerous things. I think they'd even had reports of uh, a few sorry people that would end up doing that, hadn't paid the people and got killed. So all of these sort of, whether they're scare tactics, stories, whatever, the hostel were very clear, the hostel people were very nice, and they were very clear, and they said, do not accept drugs off the street. They also said, there's a very famous hostel down the road that always has like a, a Coke party on like a Wednesday or whatever it was. He said, you, f you feel free to go, but again, you have to be very careful there. You have to be very, very careful with uh, going there, purely because, you know, anything can happen. After walking around the old section of town and, and having a view, we decided to go for a little bit of a longer walk and, and walk along the various uh, sections of seafront. You know, why not? You're pretty much on the seafront. Now, at 42 degrees, normally, I mean, that's pretty hot at the best of times. No word of a lie, the sea was too hot to get in. I mean, I'm a toe dipper at the best of times. Aaron will back me up on that. I'm a toe dipper at the best of times. My word, good job I did toe dip because it was absolutely roasting. You, I don't know how marine life survives in there. It was ridiculously hot in the sea in Cartagena. It was too hot to get in. Absolutely too hot to get in. The other thing that wasn't ridiculously enjoyable, but again, I understand people have got to make a living, is that we tried to sit down on the beach for five or ten minutes to soak up a little bit of the sunshine, and you're just getting hassled with people. People start massaging your back, and again, it's one of those things, if, if, you, if you allow that to happen, that can lead to different things, and next thing you know, you're, you're being asked to pay money for X, Y, and Z. So we decided we, just, we should just keep on walking, not take some time to relax at the beaches, but keep on walking. So we walked around uh, a few areas of town um, outside of the old walls. Uh, they get Samani district, the Boca Grande district, El Laguito, like the little lake, and Castillo Grande. 
we pretty much walked around the shoreline, around the coastline. Uh, again, it's about 42 degrees now. And the best experience was uh, quickly popping into uh, a little supermarket that was fully air-conned. Absolutely wonderful, delightful. Love a bit of air-con, especially when it's 42 degrees. We'd made sure we'd done that in the morning. I mean, we, you know, we were up. It was, again, it's, you know, in the 40s. We hadn't had breakfast, uh, but we had been stocking up on various juices uh, because of the amount of uh, fruits and the variety of fruits they've got in Colombia. You know, we were drinking from all the street vendors and bits and bobs, you know, mango juice, orange juice, uh, lime juice as well, uh, lemon and lime juice. And that was keeping us refreshed. Really, when it's that hot, there is not much of an appetite to have. I kid you not, there's not really a lot of an appetite to have. When you got to the stage uh, early afternoon, probably 45 degrees by now. And we, we just went back to the hostel. It was, it, was, it was way too hot. Went back to the hostel. And again, with the time difference, we ended up watching a bit of football in the afternoon. I uh, just drank loads of rum. Uh, the best and the beautiful part of drinking loads of rum is it didn't even get drunk. Because the minute it was going in you, it was pretty much being sweated out straight away. So I'm pretty sure our, our diet for the day consisted of lime juice, lemon juice, drinking rum. And then if any of us ate something, we might have had a bit of a bread roll and we might have bit into a lemon. The sheer excitement of being in very, very hot weather. And we just watched a bunch of football that evening as well, which was cool. And the following day, uh, we decided that we should really head over to a different place. Uh, so we basically booked in we booked in a couple of bus journeys I uh, booked in a bus journey up to Santa Marta we decided not to go to Barranquilla purely because it just seemed like another big city Santa Marta seemed a little bit uh, more low-key plus there was a hostel that was one of Escobar's former houses apparently I uh, said so the idea of staying in a an ex-cartel house is quite cool so we decided to head over there the following day but going back to talking about taking drugs and not accepting uh, drugs when in Colombia. It's always good to heed the advice of local people, especially people that work at hostels, they're there to protect you. So this day, before we were heading over to Santa Marta, uh, we were, again, we just went for another walk. Again, the temperature's really high. Went for another walk, looked at a couple of different museums, uh, different plazas within the city walls this time, rather than walking around the old city walls. And we stopped off for a beer which was pretty pointless because the minute it was taken out of the fridge, it's pretty much warm. We had a couple of beers and uh, kept walking around and a couple of guys had come up to us, um, not together, but independently. And it's like, basically I won't do the Spanish, but it's like, I want some cocaine. And we said, no, no, it's still being gracias. Yeah, we're okay. And then you get the sales pictures. Like, yeah, but it's very good stuff. It's the best stuff in Colombia. It's really cheap. It's like $2 an ounce, uh, $2 a gram. If it's $2 an ounce, fuck me. If it's $2 a gram. You know, it's a great stuff. You sure don't want some. We can go to this bar here. My mate runs it. All of that shit. And we're like, still bien, gracias, still bien. Doesn't help me sticking out like sore thumbs. Yeah, we're both white guys. We're there in our vests. We're roasting hot. It's great. But again, it kind of just meant that we weren't able to really just sit down and enjoy a beer for the sake of enjoying a beer without getting hassled too much. So after being hassled, we, we went back to the hostel. Again, afternoon, we, we put the football on. We put the football on and, you know, we've just enjoyed it. The great thing about having the TV in the hostel, it was on the roof. So it's like a big, massive gazebo tent thing on, on top of the roof. We're just watching football. There's a bar up there. Everyone's having a laugh. This English kid, young English kid's come bursting in. Late teens, early 20s. He's come bursting in. The guy's in tears. And he's saying to the hostel person, basically, and I'm in the ship, a uh, hostel you know, lady saying, well, what's gone on? He said, well, I was offered some coke in town. I've, I've taken it. And then they, you know, they've cornered me. They've marched me to an ATM. I, I didn't have my you know, card on me, I didn't have cash on me at all, you know, I've, I've paid them what I could, um, you know, they're waving guns, and we're, you name it, that story, he was, he was saying it, so he, he's panicking, he, poor, poor, poor lads in tears, Aaron and I, he's like, well, you know, well, is there anything we could do to help, and he's like, no, don't worry about it, but thanks for offering, I mean, secretly behind, you know, we were saying, well, that's what, exactly why you listen to hostile people, you listen to people, because you, that sort of shit then doesn't happen if you listen to, to, to what these people say. All that being said, uh, transpired that he basically was was threatened at gunpoint and uh, said that they would pretty much be coming to the hostel tomorrow and and finding him then. Bit bit doom and gloom, I must admit. So the, the lady at the hostel ended up booking him a new hostel in a different town. I think he ended up going to the Barranquilla and he had to be escorted out 
of the hostel uh, from like the, the rear door so no one would notice him. So he packed his stuff and he fucked off. Bless, I hope that, I hope that kid's okay, but I mean, say he was in absolute tears uh, given everything that was going on. And that evening, that was Wednesday evening, uh, we, we debated going to this famous hostel to, to the Coke party. We decided not to. Uh, the reason for that, it was too damn hot. We were still just on the roof enjoying beers, listening to some music, having a laugh with a few other people in the hostel. The idea of being in a, a room full of people doing coke and drinking and, you know, all of that shit just didn't appeal to us at that time. I'm sure maybe if it was a bit cooler outside, we might have done, but, you know, it was too nice an evening to, to do that. And the following day, when we went to Santa Marta uh, over breakfast, we briefly heard some stories uh, from a couple of people that had been to the hostel, the other hostel the night before. And again, in reflection, we were glad that we didn't go. Uh, people had apparently turned up with guns. No one was injured to our knowledge. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot of issues there, apparently there uh, that evening at, at the hostel where people under the influence and taking drugs. So we, we, we were grateful that we had heeded the advice of local people, heeded the advice of what to do and what not to do. As we said in time and time before in the, in the travel series, Normally you get a good recommendation. Normally it's uh, going to be go to this place or do this or do that. Sometimes it's a case of don't do this and don't do that. This was one of those times where that was the case. We had to heed the advice. We did heed the advice and we were quite lucky really at the end of the day that we decided not to uh, go to that party. That's Cartagena done. Uh, we went to Santa Marta. We went through Barranquilla. Uh, the most entertaining part of Barranquilla was pretty much going around the uh, the football stadium that they've got, uh, which is on a main road uh, near near the main road. I think it was the uh, I forget the name of it, but we went around in the football stadium anyway in the bus, and we ended up in Santa Marta. Uh, made our way straight to the straight to the hostel, the hostel that was apparently an old Escobar place, exciting stuff. And that's where we're going to pick up the story next time. We're going to pick up the story in Santa Marta. And you want to check in because we're going to talk a bit about coffee, some other things. And then we also head down to Medellin, or Medellin, uh, home of the infamous Pablo Escobar. Join us next time. Hasta luego.